Well, thank you for coming. I'll pass the floor over to Director General Francis Gurry to talk to you about the international um, trademark and design system in 2011. Uh, Neil Wilson, the director of our functional support division, is also with us today for the brands and design sector. Yes, sir. Okay, thanks, Emma. Ladies and gentlemen, very good morning to you all. Uh, so we move away. Last time we met, we were speaking about technology, really, and here we're moving to brands and designs. Brands and designs are uh, also extremely important parts of in the innovation ecosystem, if you like. Brands are uh, the principal means of establishing reputation and to distinguish products and indeed enterprises in the market. And designs, of course, are very important means of ensuring product differentiation, especially in, in areas where the technological possibilities have been exhausted. It's mainly the appearance that, that, um, that makes the difference between products. Uh, our two systems here are not as comprehensive as our system in the case of patents, the Patent Cooperation Treaty. So the first system uh, that I'll speak about is our Madrid system for the international registration of marks. Uh, it has 80, no, 85, 85 uh, member states. So if you compare it to the Patent Cooperation Treaty, the, the, the latter has 145. Uh, but it is in the process of expansion still. And uh, marks are considered to be quite a good indicator of economic activity and economic health because they concern new products and new enterprises. And what we see is that in 2011 there was continued growth, uh, especially over the first part of the year, a slight stabilising of the growth toward in the latter quarter, the last quarter of the year, but overall an increase of 6.5 per cent. So it's a fairly good reflection, I think, of the economic condition of 2012, uh, 2011 uh, increase, but a, a slight um, slowdown in the rate of increase at, towards the end of the year. As far as who is doing what in this system is concerned, um, we see that in Europe, uh, it requires just a little bit of expl explanation, in Europe, it used to be the case once that each member of the European Union had its own uh, trademark system. They established a European community mark that is valid for the whole of the European Union. Uh, and uh, so you have, a parallel you have parallel systems of the individual national marks plus the community mark. And what we see is that the national filings from Europe have had a tendency to decrease slightly, but the regional filing from Europe has increased uh, quite considerably. So in terms of our top applicants, you'll find it in the press release, but the European Union is the leading uh, applicant uh, for uh, Madrid system, okay, okay. Yep. followed by uh, Germany, United States, France, Switzerland, Italy. It's in table one in the press release. Uh, compared to the areas of the area of technology, uh, China and Japan have a more muted performance. Uh, China, you'll see, is the seventh largest filer, and Japan is the tenth largest filer. That's largely a result, in the case of Japan, of the relative newness of their participation in this system. And I think that we will see uh, a much uh, expanded use of the system by Japan in the coming years. In the case of China, it may be noted also that it is the top designated country You'll find that in Table 2. So when you file an international uh, application for trademark protection, you designate the countries in which you would like it to be valid. And China is, is as you might see, perceived to be the most desirable market, the one in which the most number of applicants seek 
designations or protection, followed by the European Union, the United States, interestingly, the Russian Federation. Uh, okay, let me move uh, to the Hague system for industrial designs. It's a much smaller system. It's in the process, we hope, of expansion. And by the way, on expansion possibilities, if I can just revert to the Madrid system for trademarks for one moment, we are expecting, we are hoping that the Philippines, India, uh, uh, and uh, possibly Colombia will come into the system this year. Uh, there may be others, but at least those we are hoping will uh, join the system. In the case... Madrid. Madrid. Francis, you didn't tell us some... If your organisation is monitoring how much abuse is happening on the trademark system. These systems are establishing the right or obtaining the right. But are you monitoring where the rights are abused? Uh, no, we don't, that's because the member states do, have not <coughs> conferred that role upon us. I see. Okay. Uh, well, who has that role? Well, I think it's done uh, bilaterally. So there's no international oversight? There is no international agency that has the task of collecting intelligence on the extent of uh, alleged abuse of trademark rights. So, on uh, going back to designs, we are hoping to see an expansion in this system, and we know that it is being carefully considered by uh, China, Japan, the Republic of Korea, and the United States of America. But at the moment, it remains uh, a much smaller system. Uh, and what we can note simply is that there was an increase in activity of about 5.7%. Uh, and interestingly, uh, the most applicants came from Germany, followed by Switzerland. But I would just uh, simply note the last thing that I would say, that the United States of America let me rephrase that. Uh, yeah, US applicants are the third largest filers, even though they're not party to the system. How does that happen? Will they file through uh, subsidiaries who are incorporated and have their principal place of business in member state, a member state, for so example, Europe? Japan. Sorry? Which one does not... Uh, the US number is number three. If you look at table four... Uh, number, table four. The third address, if you like, of the applicant is the US. But they're not part of the system. But you also see from the press release that Procter & Gamble, Gillette, mm. amongst others, are big filers. How? Because they use their subsidiaries who are, who are party, uh, who are resident in a contracting party to file. So it's a good, re good reason why we hope we'll see uh, the US amongst others come into the system. You don't get the breakdown by the uh, sector? Uh, we do. Yeah, I think so, don't we? Uh, I've got some information on that. It's the last paragraph, yeah. Page three, halfway down the page. Packaging. For cosmetics and food stuff, natron. Containers. Plastic bottles. Clocks and watches. Just quick about the US. So you're saying that the, the U.S. company headquartered in the U.S. using software, say, in, in Switzerland to file the clients? Yes. Yes, since they, since they can't file from the U.S. because the U.S. is not a party. Okay. For example, P&G have yep. a big... Mm -hmm. Exactly. In, exactly. In, in, in Geneva. Yeah. So, and so a Swiss company cannot protect the United States... Through the, the system. system. Exactly. Exactly. How do they do it? They would file nationally. They would file a in US, yeah US. as a foreign applicant file in the US. Yeah. So um, so so PMG application is counted under US. Not well, in uh, well, it's actually counted. It depends on what you're counting. So if you're counting, <laughs> uh, if you look at table, I'll give you two different tables. If you look at table three, yeah. right? 
it's counted under Switzerland, yeah. if, if that is indeed where it's coming from. If you look at Table 4, it's counted by, you know, under the US. Because the applicant is de facto in the US. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It is confusing, but, but uh, yeah, uh, it's confusing, but it, it's just an indication that the system is considered to be desirable. Um, you know, even though. Can you explain where you need to file? You need to file in two locations, or in one? One. You file from uh, a contracting party. You file with us, actually. So it's what you what we're really talking about is entitlement to file. So you have to establish your entitlement to file, and normally you would do that. The normal way is by being a national of a contracting party. But since corporations, you know, you assess their, quote, nationality, unquote, by their place of principal place of business or place of incorporation, that means a subsidiary will be considered to be eligible uh, if it is incorporated in the country that is a contracting party. To tell you the truth, I don't understand point in, in, in table four, United States. Who is filing what there? This gives me, Neil, correct me if I'm wrong, this gives you an indication of the, the applications that have been filed that really come from US entities. Even though they have been filed through, for example, Switzerland. So you're preaching yeah. yeah. So effectively those United States numbers are Procter & Gamble, and Procter & Gamble has a real and effective commercial establishment in Switzerland which is party to the system, even though the address of the applicant is in, um, in the United States. So they're headquartered here? No, they have a right. real and effective commercial establishment in Switzerland. That's and it's on the basis of that that they are entitled to file. So how do you avoid that accounting? The numbers. Well, uh, you, 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 you single count because the first table, table three, tells you, you know, the contracting party from which it's originating, if you like. And the second one tells you the address of the applicant. If you know, think of tax systems and real and effective presence in a tax system, you know, you might, just because you're a, a, the parent company is ultimately based in the US doesn't mean you can't tax the activity locally if there's a real and effective establishment, which is something somewhat similar to the permanent establishment concept of the tax treaties. Unless the entity has a company in the Bahamas as well, or Happens also, yes. That's right. We are hoping that this may change in the next two years. Any questions on the trademarks question? Francis, the fact that China is the most desirable, mm. most designated, yes. Yes. does that reflect also one fears that um, um, uh, copying it um, uh, is, is more likely to be done in China than in some of the other countries? Uh, well, it could. I mean, I think the first reflection is, is why do you file in a country? You file because you have activities there and you want your mark to be protected there. Uh, so that's, I think, the first and obvious reason before looking for more complicated explanations. But if you don't file in a country, of course, then you're not protected there, mm. are you? So you are open to someone else using the mark, okay. and you have no means of recourse against them. Yeah. So a second reason would be your fear of uh, the Ill, you know, illicit within inverted commas, because it's not illegal, actually, mm. use of the mark. 
Well, it's not illegal if it's not a, if you haven't registered there and it's not a famous mark. Besides, what's famous? Well, uh, a famous famous marks are protected under the Paris Convention, well-known marks, but the appreciation of what constitutes a well-known mark is uh, national. Yeah. And, and Bob, you might apply the same reasoning to every other country that's designated. Sure. Yeah. There's a systemic question again. When do you, I mean, you put the European Union yeah. in the, for the Madrid system. Yes. So then you put the individual. Yes, exactly. So, so is that double counting or no. is that not? No, the European Union is for the community mark. And a community mark is valid in all of the countries of the Union. It's a single title for the whole territory of the Union. But, of course, that comes on top of historical systems that existed at the national level uh, and that still continue to exist that give you a mark for the territory of the particular member of the European Union. So a German, Germany here, is a mark that is valid only in Germany. Uh, whereas the European Union mark, it covers the whole territory of the Union. And, and why we see, what we, we see, in e the, the EU system is relatively new. 2004. 2004. They they joined out. They, they joined. They joined Madrid, and it existed for a couple of years before that. So, so there's no double count. These are different creatures. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if, it, 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 even if a company gets the EU mark, it yeah. doesn't work anything in Germany. It does. It is. Mm -hmm. It covers. It covers Germany, but it also covers France and the other 26. Yeah, uh, must be double. No, because you know, because <coughs> you they if you applied for a European Community Mark, yeah. you would not bother to apply for a national mark, right? Because you're already no. covered, right? But you could apply for simply a mark in Germany. Uh, Why? Because you might be you might be a chocolate shop, uh, you know, in Versoix or okay. not Versoix, but it's equivalent in <laughs> Constance, <Okay. laughs> you know, and you may not be wanting to, you, you may not want the additional expense of the whole territory because you might be aiming only at a small local okay. market. Is this a record number? It is a record number for Madrid, yes, which is you know, a positive sign for the for the world's economic situation. Could you give two, ex two basic, simple examples of designs, most most applied design kind of designs? Well, watches are a good example. You know, the 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 watch face. You know, there are various uh, the the way in which the the watch joins the band. For example, there are lots of different uh, uh, <coughs> uh, examples of that or designs in relation to that. Uh, you could also take uh, cars, you know, the shape of a car, yeah. the shape of parts and, of cars. And, and, and for instance, mobile phones? Mobile phones, you can certainly have it, yes. Tablet computers? Tab well, yes, but you might have a problem with the criterion of, uh, of um, registrability, which is originality. So well, it's only to see if Apple and the others yeah. can... They have okay. on various parts of it. In fact, we will have uh, an exhibition of Steve Jobs' patents and designs. Uh, later, later this year in April. Uh, it opens on March 29th. We'll be telling. March 29th, and you'll see lots of examples of designs in relation to the, uh, the sort of elements you're talking about: computer equipment. Mm -hmm. Okay. But mm, principally, it's external appearance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's external, exter appearance. external appearance. Yeah. yeah. So, for instance, watch. Uh, yeah. Yes. A lot of their stuff in. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Yeah. And do they file, they go first to the Swiss patent office? Or and do they? Under the Hague system, like it, 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 all these systems are different, but under the Hague system, they come direct to us, direct deposit, which is international in scope. Yeah. And do they have to do it additionally in other countries or not? Is it sufficient if they go with you? It is for the, for the contracting parties of this system, yes. But they have to look, so if there's an important country outside of the planet, that's right. there they have that's to right. go. And that's the interest in, in creating simplicity for users by expanding the system. And do you do something to expand, sorry, if I'm wrong? Yes, I'm no, we do. We, we actively promote uh, the system and the advantages of the system. And as I said, very serious consideration has been given to, to joining by China, Japan, the Republic of Korea, and the United States and of America. America. No, in the United States of America, the Hague, system. the Hague system, amongst others. Japan, US, US China, China, Republic of Korea. Korea? Yeah. How many do you have? In the Madrid you have 85, and in the Hague you have? <coughs> 59. And yeah. that the Europeans count their sing, uh, single countries? Yes. And, and ASEAN countries are committed in principle to coming in by 2015. 2015. Well. Yes. So the next years we'll see a big expansion in the systems, both systems. So the, the low membership must reflect <coughs> the industrial uh, espionage and copying. Uh, the low membership reflects history uh, and a particular system. You know, what ha happened in both cases, that, uh, just very briefly, in the case of the Madrid system, you had a system which was designed for the civil law uh, approach to trademark registration. Okay? And that was changed in 1989 by something called the Madrid Protocol, which has enabled the expansion of the system beyond essentially Europe. And in the case of The Hague, similar story, but the change occurred in 1999 rather than 1989, which is enabling the expansion of the system, but we are you know, in that process. The, why doesn't it happen overnight? Why don't they? Well, because it's not necessarily the number one legislative. Getting legislative time these days is extremely difficult, especially in election years, and there are elections in 48 countries this year, so, you know. Um, sorry, Francis, I'm not quite clear. Why um, would Germany uh, make uh, so many applications yes. outside the EU system? Um, individual. Or uh, individual. individual. And why, I, I presume that these were uh, counted separately. Yes. Uh, well, it, respect, uh, it reflects... I think it reflects the just the the expectation of the territories over which, in which, you would expect to do business, or you plan to do business. So uh, they might say, "Well, we're going to do business in Germany and France and Switzerland," and they may feel that that. It's sufficient to have a German mark and a French mark and a Swiss mark, rather than trying to have a community mark and a Swiss mark. Mm. You see, it's just a where you are going to be operating. Because let's remember, lots of local, lots of marks use, you know, fairly are used. Every every local enterprise has a mark, just about, but they don't necessarily need it for the whole territory of the European Union. Wouldn't it be um, better to, to take the E1, which would then give them a, a much broader cover? Or is, it, is it more expensive? <coughs> yes, but your the possibility of a collision mm -hmm. is increased mm -hmm. if if the territory is enlarged. Mm -hmm. So if you have a mark, uh, then your potential in one territory that say let's Germ say Germany, uh, then the number of rights against which you know you might be uh, potentially coming into collision is smaller than the number of rights in the whole territory of the European Union. Yeah?
So you, uh, by going nationally, in a certain sense, you are re reducing to some extent your vulnerability or increasing your possibility of getting the registration. Mm -hmm. And down the road, enforcement. Yeah. Well, I have a question from yeah, Table 1 and Table 2. Since uh, Table 1, the total is around uh, 42,000, but Table 2 is 10 times more than that. Does yeah. that mean yeah. that each application could designate several companies? Is that right? Yes, that's exactly right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It does indeed. Yes. Yeah. So it's multiple yeah. designations. Yeah, that's 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 why you use the international system to get coverage over more than one country. Okay. But uh, on the table one, uh, so each company filed the application to the local or to the national. Uh, well, that system is. I'm sorry, it's different. Uh, I mean, let's see. Sure. Yeah, each system's different. So of our three systems in the PCT, uh -huh. you file. Um, an international application through through, through okay. a national office, okay. but but it is always an international application. Yeah. It's just the place of filing is, yeah. it tends to be yeah. uh, is well, usually a national office. In the case of the Madrid system, you have to have a national application or registration to start. That, and then you build your international application on the basis of your national application or registration. And in the case of the Hague system, you come straight to us. Uh, without having national Without going through the national, okay. yeah. Thank you. Is that one-stop shop or the member state or the company have to pick the countries that they want? They have to pick the, the countries. And they pay more for more countries at That's right, price. that's right. And the countries so have... how much can it cost on average uh, for one trademark might want to be active in, say, 30 countries. Um, so, if I may, yeah. these, are the, um, these are the fee uh, numbers, which I'm not particularly good at, but, but nonetheless. So, uh, the basic fee is around 600 francs for an international um, uh, application. If it's in colour, it's around 900. And then individual designation <coughs> fees are uh, expressed according to the requirements of the, of the individual countries. And these are normally based upon an amount uh, per class of goods and services and uh, another amount for... How uh, much is that roughly? Ballpark. Usually ballpark around 100 to 150 Swiss francs per class. Um, and I think that an average fee uh, is around two and a half thousand to three thousand Swiss francs, where there are maybe three or four designations in average and, and three or four classes. And is that a one off fee or an annual fee? So it establishes a period of protection of 10 years for the international registration, and that's renewable an infinite number of times in 10 year periods after that. No. That's Madrid. Uh, that's Madrid. That's Madrid. Yeah. Can I, can I uh, make one addition to what Neil has said? One way of understanding it is that the system is basically cost recovery so for the office. So we charge, as Neil said, 600, but 900 for colour. Why more for colour? Because theoretically more work is required. Uh, it's a historical explanation. Right. Technical <laughs> publication <laughs> question. <laughs> Technical publication, yeah. yeah. But at the, at the national level, it's more for each class because you're searching in the classes, usually. To, to for, for conflicts, but more work is required by so the office. So this is just the wiper fee of two and a half to three thousand. No, 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 no. And it's both. The national so yeah. that's the but that's that's the basic fee, which is six hundred or nine hundred, in addition to individual fees for each country where 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 protection is required. And I'd like to also say that the um, individual fee uh, paid for each designation uh, under Madrid can't exceed the national fund. What, and, and why why is it that that you don't make an application for the whole bunch of countries that do uh, pertain to the Madrid system? Why why has it been established? Put it individually? Is that only a question of money, or it looks so complicated? I mean, um, well, again, it's it's you you would apply where you intend to have operations. Mm -hmm. 
So, but in uh, a globalized world, at some point, you will have operations everywhere. Well, that's the case for if you look at, for example, pharmaceutical companies, they apply everywhere. As a generalization, they tend to. to so it depends on it depends on, you know, uh, if you are a luxury good, uh, if your watches, you would probably only be applying in those countries where there is a, s a significant market for purchasing the goods. Nespa. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 in the in or. Or where the manufacturing capacity exists, yeah. you know, against you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> In other words, it and when, and yeah. when when I when when somebody is using my brand uh, illegally, like the Chinese. Um, then I can sue only in Chinese courts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If the use is confined to the territory of China. If the I allegedly illegal use is confined to the territory of China. Okay. If it is um, an enterprise that originates in China or whatever other country, and the use extends beyond yeah. that country, you can sue in what it, wherever the in allegedly infringing use is taking place. Oh, in the country that where I can right. observe this. Uh, That's right. This exactly. Virus. So if it's imported into a country, you can sue there. For example. Russia's um, uh, moving up pretty fast in trade market. Yes, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, Growing consumer market, I'd say. Mm -hmm. What sort of uh, <laughs> what sort of things are they? Um, um, are they going to I don't know the answer to that. <coughs> so. Um, this, the, the tables included in this press release are also uh, included in our web statistics, which you'll find on our website. Mm -hmm. And there you're able to dynamically establish uh, tables that are specific to the Russian Federation, for example, mm -hmm. um, where, you can, where you can get uh, counts on the types of classes of goods and services that, um, that the Russian Federation applicants are, are filing internationally in. Mm -hmm. Similarly, you can look to see the classes that um, the Russian Federation is being designated in. So there you can get a better sense of what what, uh, what products are being sought after for, for protection. So you might not take from the screen. Well, I'm um, about this question. Is it like the example you gave earlier? It could be, say, um, Swatch Russia making applications in Russia. A subsidiary, say, if there's a subsidiary. If there is a subsidiary, it's yeah. John, yeah. not with Swatch. You just took you took the, really the worst example. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I knew that would get you. Swiss made. Swiss made. Maybe auto parts. It, yeah, it could be, but you, you might expect it to be, you know, Russian enterprise too. But do we know what the mix is? You can find out that. Are we good? Thank you so much. Okay, thanks very much.